Hi, this is Susie Poor, class of 2017, and today I'll be finding the electric field at a point P on the z-axis due to a thin, uniformly charged ring. Now, the strategy to, uh, in order to do this will be by breaking the ring up into tiny parts and finding the electric, the electric field caused by each of those parts and then summing those together through an integral. So, to start off, we'll break the ring up into a little tiny part right here, and we'll say that it has a charge delta Q of the entire charge. And we'll draw a line from delta Q to the point P, and we'll call this line R, Ri. Now, in this situation, you can see that the ring is uniformly distributed around the axis, so therefore, the y components are going to cancel out, and the only components that we're going to be taking into account here are going to be the x components. So, writing the equation, we'll see that we have e i sub z is going to be equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times our differential charge q all over r i squared. And then we're going to have to get to a cosine. So we'll have this be our angle theta i, and then we also have to take into account the angle going around the thin ring. So we'll call that going this way. That angle will be phi. So we'll have the cosine of theta i. Now, we can make some substitutions here. So we also have to take into account the linear charge density of the ring. So we can say that lambda is equal to the charge q over l, which will be also be equal to the charge q over L in this instance is the circumference of the ring, so that'll be 2 pi r. And in the case of our differential charge, we'll have that be equal to delta q over, and that's uh, the arc length s is equal to the angle times r. So in this instance, that'll be delta phi times r. Now, cosine of theta, we can also make some substitutions there. So we see that this makes a right triangle. So if cosine is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse, we can say that the adjacent here in this instance is going to be this distance z, so it'll be z, over the hypotenuse here. And because this is a right triangle, we can say that that'll be equal to z squared, root z squared rather, plus, and we're going to be having the other component be the radius here, so radius squared. All right, so now we can make some substitutions. So we have e i sub z is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times, making that substitution for delta q, we can see that up here, delta q will equal lambda times d phi r. So putting that in here, we have lambda d phi r all over r i squared, which we found up here, is going to be the z squared um, plus r squared. So since that'll be squared, it's just going to be uh, z squared plus r squared. And then we substitute the cosine. So we're going to have times z over root z squared plus r squared. Now, simplifying a bit that a bit, we can see that we can um, multiply these two together. And we'll have e i sub z is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times lambda d phi r z over z squared plus r squared now to the 3 halves because this was originally to 1 halves and that was to 1 so that goes to 3 halves. Now we're going to do the integral of both sides. So the integral of these, so we'll have e z, and we can see that we can pull out some constants here. So all of our constants, um, the linear charge density is going to be a constant, r is going to be a constant, z is going to be a constant, and these are all going to be constants. So we have lambda r z over 4 pi epsilon naught z squared plus r squared to the 3 halves, extend that line a bit, and we're going to have the integral of just d phi, that's the only thing that's changing. Now what are going to be the bounds on that, so bounds on that integration? Well since it's going all the way around the circle, we can say that it's going from 0 to 2 pi. So continuing on, we have e 
z is equal to lambda rz over 4 pi epsilon naught parentheses z squared plus r squared to the 3 halves of now the integral of phi of d phi is just going to be phi and we're going to be evaluating that from 0 to 2 pi and we can see that that will be just be equal to 2 pi minus 0 so we'll have e sub z is equal to lambda rz times 2 pi all over 4 pi epsilon naught z squared plus r squared to the 3 halves. And now we can do some further simplifications here. So we see that the 2 pi and the 4 pi are going to simplify. So that is going to be equal to lambda r z all over 2 epsilon naught parentheses z squared plus r squared to the 3 halves. Now we can also make some substitutions here. So we see that lambda back up here is equal to the charge Q over 2 pi r. So making these substitutions, we see that E, e z is equal to um, Q r z over 2 times 2 pi r epsilon naught z squared plus r squared to the 3 halves. And further simplifying that, we see that e z is equal to q z, r's cancel, all over 4 pi epsilon naught z squared plus r squared to the 3 halves. And this is going to be your final answer. Now it's a lot of work, but um, you do get there. And I hope that helped. Thanks very much.